Hey guys, it is Monday, January 25th. Hope you all had a great weekend. I've got 18 eBay orders to ship out this morning. Let's get to work. First couple things I went ahead and pulled from my storage unit. This is a Shop Brothers jacket. It's got a pretty cool design inside. Let me open this up and show you guys. It says, remember me, victory belongs to the most persevering. I got this last summer at a garage sale for five bucks, and it took a while to sell. I think I had it listed for about $45 and sent out an offer yesterday to a watcher for $25 plus shipping, and they accepted. This one right here uh, is a vegan shirt. It says, arm the animals, fair is fair. I got this also last summer at a garage sale for a dollar, and somebody sent me an offer on this one for $25 plus shipping, and I accepted. That shirt's going out to a viewer named Dustin. He says, hey, John, I'm a viewer of your YouTube channel, and I want to thank you for your knowledge and info. My eBay store is Monk's Resale and Vintage. Dustin, thanks for your support. Hope you like that shirt. Okay, next thing is down in B51. This is something I got from my guy Mike. It is a bike tool. It sold for $21.99 plus shipping. Next is a whole bunch of cassette tapes on two different racks. Let's see, first is right here, bring this over, and the same buyer got the second lot right down here. Um, each lot had about 50 tapes, and both of them sold for the same amount. Decided to do an auction with these, and each one sold for $20.50 plus shipping, and I'll just combine them into the same box and refund them the difference in the shipping cost. Next thing is a Coca-Cola hat. I think it is this one right here. I got this a few months ago, part of a bulk buy. I've got about $2 into it. Uh, this was another offer. Somebody sent me an offer for $25. A lot of $25 offers over the weekend. Um, $25 plus shipping, and I accept it. That's going to answer your name, Robert. Thank you for the support, Robert. I really appreciate it. Next is something small. It's a socket, and it's an old inventory code before I switched over. So I think it's probably down here. Yeah, that's it. This is also something I got from my guy, Mike. This is a Matco socket, 36 millimeters. That sold for $24.99, free shipping. Next is a Pyrex casserole dish. Let's see, right here. I've had this for about six months or so. I got it in a random lot of stuff. So I've only got about a dollar into it. Didn't have the lid, which hurt the value, but it still sold for $9.99 plus shipping. All right, next order has five things. First is a Mickey Mouse figure on E2 right here. This was in that big box of stuff that I paid $150 for. That sold for $29.99 plus shipping. And then next is a lot of four items they bought all at once. Let's see, we've got this My Little Pony Rainbow Dash figure. We've got a Stormtrooper bobblehead right there. And then we've got two Lord of the Rings figures. An Aragorn and a Traveling Bilbo. Here is the Aragorn. And the Bilbo is right here. Those four items sold for $52.96 plus shipping. And I will just combine all of that into one box and refund them the difference in the shipping cost. All that stuff's going on to a viewer named David. He says, Hi, John. Keep up the great work. I'm really enjoying the podcast with Lonnie. Cheers. David, Turn Back the Clock Boutique on eBay. David, thanks for the kind words and thanks for your support. I'm going to take a break from packing orders and answer a couple of viewer questions. First is from Mikey Vital. When you say you pull something from your storage unit, is that a completely separate unit? How much inventory is in there versus the area you film in? Yeah, so my warehouse is in the middle of like a storage facility so they have a bunch of storage units and they have like some office spaces it works out really well and i have two storage units my first one i use for extra ebay inventory big large odd shaped boxes odds and ends things that i take to my antique mall stuff like that and it is totally separate it's only like i don't know 500 feet or something it's a pretty short walk and i like to store things in there that i know are like longer tail like clothing i put in there yearbooks um it's not climate controlled so i try to only put things in there that i know you know like cold weather is not going to hurt it i don't put any electronics in there or anything like that my second storage unit i got i guess it's been almost a month ago now and that I'm kind of gearing towards just local sales. So like bigger items, 
things that you know I like to put on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm trying to set up some racks in there and kind of make it like a little miniature shop. So when somebody comes to get you know what they're buying, they can kind of look around and see if there's anything else they want in there too. And that that type of stuff is stuff that. I would almost typically donate things that are worth like you know ten dollars or less that I just don't want to mess with and I don't have a way to move it. So, gives me a chance to make a little bit of money on that stuff as well. Next is from Jeffrey Church. What's the best way to sell CDs? I have a lot of CDs laying around that I got for free at a yard sale, mostly rock and '90s hip hop and R&B. I've done okay with CDs. I always group them by genre. So if you've got three different genres, it sounds like I would do a rock genre, hip hop, and an R&B. You can maybe do hip hop and R&B together. But I've done pretty well with them. Um, I bought, let's see, last year to garage sale, I think I bought like 200 CDs for like 20 bucks or something like that. And what I always do is I'll do an initial scan to see if any of them are worth listing individually, which is rarely the case. But if nothing's worth listing individually, I'll just group them all by genre. So like, I think I did like a rock alternative genre with that a lot and a country genre. Country doesn't sell for as much, but yeah, rock and alternative CDs do pretty well. And you can look at sold comps on eBay, just search a lot of CDs and then put it in whatever genre of music it is that you want to see, you know, classic rock, alternative, whatever. And you can get an idea about what they're going for, like per CD, whether it's like 50 cents, dollar, or something like that. But yeah, group them up and you can ship them media mail. So it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Okay, next thing is a Mickey Mantle Roger Maris starting lineup figure and I'm pretty sure it is this one right here let's see yeah Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris this is something I got from Kevin the Tennessee picker that sold for $12.99 plus shipping that's going to ask a viewer named Rolando and he says big fan of the channel first time buying from you and I'm a huge Yankees fan so I couldn't pass this up can you please add some stickers if you can thank you Rolando thanks for the support I'll be happy to throw in some stickers for you next thing is a book in C42 right here this is a 1908 book of instruction for locomotive firemen just a really cool old book I got this from my guy Mike with a lot of stuff I love old books like this with unique subject matter. They always tend to do well. This one sold for $69.99 plus shipping. That book's going out to a viewer named Michael. He says, hey, John, I love these old books you find. The last set I bought from you were amazing. My nonfiction collection is growing, and I like any old technical engineering or art books. It provides a great insight into our past. Michael, I couldn't agree more. I love old books, and I want to thank you so much for your support. Next thing is an E41 right here it is a couple of star wars micro machines pod racers that i got in that big box of stuff those sold for 16.99 plus shipping next is a ticket stub it's got an old inventory code that says a1 so it is probably in here somewhere i don't think that's it i think this is it down here at the bottom yeah this is a 1939 ticket stub for a Cincinnati Reds game. It says Cincinnati Reds Baseball Club Company. It's pretty cool. That's all for $19.99, free shipping. Next is a baseball glove. Here, let's go ahead and put this box back up here. Let's see, the ball glove says B2. This is an old inventory code, but I believe it is this one right here. This is a Rawlings, I think it's a gold glove. Let me open it up here. Yeah, Gold Glove Legend. This is an infielder's glove. It is 11 and 3 quarters inch. I picked this up from my guy Mike. A lot of stuff that I got from Mike is selling today. That sold for $49.99 plus shipping. Next thing is a jacket right here. This is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers jacket I got from Kevin the Tennessee Picker. I was actually watching the uh, Packers-Buccaneers game last night. And right at the end of the game, when the Bucks won, this sold. So the timing was just so funny. That's sold for $24.99 plus shipping. Next thing is in C32. Let's see, it is right here. This is a vintage Transformers toy that was in that big box of stuff that I just bought. I think it's called Blaster, is what the name of this one is. That's sold for $39.99 plus shipping. The toy's going to ask a viewer named David. He says, Hi John, still loving the videos, still working on growing my NC Picker YouTube channel. Recently I started up an NC Flipper channel for what sold videos. Have you ever considered doing that? Yeah, so I know some, you know, a lot of people are doing that now. I know Lonnie has a, his Shed Flips channel, Commonwealth Picker has a Commonwealth Flipper channel. I think 
part-time pickers, has a part-time flips channel. A lot of people are separating the two, kind of like one channel for what they find, and then another channel for what they sell. It makes perfect sense. I've given it a lot of thought. I don't know that I'll personally do it just because the work of maintaining one YouTube channel is enough for me with everything else that I have going on. So I'll probably just stick to one, but I enjoy watching both, you know, like everybody I subscribe to that has that second channel, I always subscribe to that other channel because it really goes in depth with different things and you just get a different look at everything. So I think it's fun. I think it's pretty cool. And I want to wish you the best of luck with both your channels. All right. Last thing I'm shipping out today is a punch wine bowl with mugs. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure where it is. I think this might be it right here. Let me see if I can pull this out. Yeah, this is it. I got this from the Piqua resellers. I think it's been six months, nine months. It's been quite a long time. I had it listed for around $60 and didn't get any bites. I sent out an offer of $45 plus shipping and someone accepted. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.